All right, so chapter number three, we look into dynamic NAT. So let's look into the definition of dynamic NAT. A dynamic NAT is a private IP address is mapped to a public IP address from NAT address pool. All right, so the keyword here is an address pool containing a group of uh, public IP addresses. Static NAT strictly map addresses in one-to-one -one mode. So that is the main difference. Static is one-to-one, -one, whereas dynamic is many-to-many. -many. As a result, even if an internal host is offline for a long time or does not send data, the public address is still occupied by the host. This is the disadvantage of using a static. So dynamic NAT prevents such address waste. When an internal host access an external network, an available IP addresses in an NAT address pool is temporarily assigned to the host and make it as in use. So again, you can see here, we have a temporarily assigned. So once the user don't use it, it will be released. So when the host no longer access the external network, the assigned IP is reclaimed and marked as not used. This is the example here. In the pool, we have 122.1.2.1.2.2 and .2.3. So currently, none of it is being used. So assuming if uh, the uh, 192.168.1.1 accessing the internet, so what will happen here is it will use and uh, this will mark as in use and we have two more IP address is not being used and once this uh, 192.168.1.1 uh, shut down uh, what will happen here is this one will release again so that is the theory on dynamic NAT So let's look into the example here. So we have two parts in this example. So on the first step, you can see here, step number one, IP source of 192.168.1.1 initiate a connection to 200.123, which in this case, this is the server. It will go into the NAT and the NAT randomly select an IP address in the pool. So in here, we have 122.1.2.2 is being selected. So that is number step number two. And since you select 122.122, the source is being translated. Okay, the destination will remain the same and it will reach to the destination. When the destination reply, it will use uh, the 122.1.2.2 uh, .2 .2 as a destination. So in our NAT mapping table, you can see that 192.168.1.1 are being mapped to 122.1.2.2. .2 Whereas uh, if let's say there is 192.168.1.2, so for example, if this guy go out and 122.1.2.1 uh, .2 .2 is being selected. So this is the example part number one so when the web server reply as you can see here step number three we have the source of 200123 in this case the uh, web server IP address the destination is 122.1.2.2 which basically match to 192.168.1.1 which is mapped into uh, the uh, PC number one. Okay, so I think that this is easy to understand. The difference over here is they are using a pool instead of a static mapping. So let's look into configuring dynamic NAT. So we have a few steps here. So step number one is to create an address pool. And the command for you to do that is called NAT address group and you are going to specify what is the start IP and what is the end IP. Of course, that this start IP and end IP is the IP address of your public address range. Okay, so once you specify that, step number two is to configure ACL. 
Now, why we need to configure ACL? Configuring ACL allow you to match what are the internal IP that is allowed to do NAT. Okay, so we learned about NAT uh, early on topic. We look into the source IP and using the uh, ACL wildcard. So you need to configure the ACL. It can be a basic ACL or it can be advanced ACL. So for our NAT, we will use basic ACL. So that's step number two. Step number three, we are going to configure an outbound NAT interface with the address pool in the interface view. So remember, it is in interface view. We are going to use a command called net outbound using the ACL. So the ACL number here is referring to the ACL number here. This tied together and the address group here referring to the address group over here. Then we have the group index. This is the group index that is our name. Then we also have a start and end address. And there's a keyword here. You notice that there's called no pad. So associate the ACL rules with the address pool for dynamic NAT on the interface. The no pad parameters specify that port address translation is not performed. No worry about no PAT here because the next slide uh, after this, we are going to explain what it means by PAT. So here we have the similar topology, but this time instead of using static NAT, we are using dynamic NAT. The topology is the same. We have three PC. We have the NAT router. We also have the same uh, external server which is 200.1.2.3 and you can see here our configuration. Remember earlier on I told you step number one we have to address define our address pool and the address pool uh, index name is called one okay in this example it choose one as the address pool index then we have ACL 2000 ACL 2000 is a basic ACL then we have the uh, rules number five permit source 192.168.1.0. In this case, means that anything with 192.168.1.0 with a wildcard of 0.0.0.255, which means the entire subnet of 192.168.1.0. And uh, we are going to do step number four here net outbound 2000 address group one, no PAT.